Welcome back to another video with me, Mitch, Coding with Mitch, otherwise known as the Recipe Guy. And in this video, I'm going to talk about an app that is not a recipe app. This is an app that I built in my most recent course. It's called Modularizing Android Apps. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm actually going to play a video that's from the course. So this is me recording today, but I'm going to play a video that's actually part of the course. And in that video, I talk about the modularization choices that I made in the course, like why I didn't modularize by layer, why I didn't modularize by feature, why I think those options are basically inferior, and why we went with a kind of a hybrid model of the two. So the first thing I think you need to do before you talk about how you're going to modularize your project is what are the key sort of metrics that you are looking to optimize? What are the things that you're looking to achieve when you're or what are the, the metrics you can compare when you compare like modularized by feature versus modularized by layer versus modularized by some hybrid model? What are the metrics you're going to compare between those two to figure out which one is the best. So I got four main kind of points here. The first one, number one here is gonna to be to make small modules. So why do you wanna have small modules? Well, number one is small modules will make your build time shorter. Number two is they're easier to read. If you have small uh, specific modules that have a specific purpose, they're much easier to read for somebody who doesn't know the code base or even people who do know the code base. And number three here is the tests are easier to write. So if they're smaller, they're easier to read, they're more specific, the tests are gonna be more clear. Now, number two here is going to be work delegation. So what does work delegation mean? Well, work delegation refers to the ability to delegate delegate other work or delegate work to either a person or a small set of people. So imagine a very large app, you have uh, many, many modules. It, it's, it would be very convenient for you if you're like a manager or something to be like, okay, you five people, you own this module or this feature or this set of modules and you guys own that, you build it, you test it, you do all that. It's, it's, a, much, it's a more organized way to delegate work. Now, number three here is going to be reusability. So what does reusability mean? Reusability refers to the ability to reuse things that are created in a module. Like if you imagine you have kind of a core business model that you've created, uh, you want to be able to reuse that in other modules. You want to be able to basically build that model once and then import that module into other modules and use that class or set of classes or utility functions or whatever. You want it to be as reusable as possible and you want and you want those things to be small because if you only want you know one data model you don't want every other thing that some other module uses it for or uses it with you just want that single data model so you want like a small reusable piece that you can just add into your module so i'll just write a little note here saying like um the ability to import as a library so import as a small library a keyword there is small because if if the library is huge you're going to get a lot of kind of build overhead build time overhead you want it to be very small bring in that little library use that little thing and move on with your life now the fourth point here is going to be one that may not matter to some people but i think is very important and that's kotlin multi-platform i think kotlin multi-platform is really picking up speed it's going to be in my opinion probably the next big sort of thing in mobile being able to be being able to share a kotlin code base uh, between different clients whether it's android ios the web um, desktop even you know um, being able to share that code is really important. So I think having just getting into the mindset of building, you know, pure Kotlin libraries, uh, pure Java libraries, whatever you want to call them, uh, and building them so that they're just Kotlin. That way they can be shared across platforms. They can be shared for iOS, Android, whatever. I think that's a really, uh, really important point. So those are our kind of four main kind of key features there. Those are the things that I'm, I'm going to be kind of comparing across the different ways to modularize. So whether it's by, uh, by we're going to compare it by feature, by layer, or some kind of a hybrid model, and just talk about those four points and see which which uh, which method kind of checks all of those boxes. Okay, so for the first kind of uh, modularization method, we're gonna look at by feature. And I've, I've drawn this table here, so there's a couple kind of points that I highlight. Um, at the top here, you're gonna see the the, the, by f the feature itself. So we have like the app feature, which is the core Android feature. Uh, so that's this here. We have the hero list feature, because if we look at our app, that, that would be considered our first feature, right? There's a list of data being displayed. And then the third feature here would be the hero detail. So that'd be like, you know, if you click on a hero, that takes you to the detail screen. So that would be considered a feature. Um, so I, then I broke it up into two kind of components, the UI component and the business component. So now how does how does this method of modularization check the boxes for the 
the method and the uh, the feature. So the UI in the app feature is no problem. There's not really much there. Basically, that's just going to be main activity, the application class, nothing. That's a that's a check. It's fine. Um, then the UI in the hero list, that's great too, because we can put all of our composables for the hero list screen very easily in that feature module. Uh, likewise with the hero detail, very easily just put those composables into uh, that feature module, no problem. Uh, the business logic for the app module, that's good. There's basically going to be very little business logic for the app module, um, not really a big deal. But now when we come to the business logic for the hero list, here's where it gets a little complicated because here, let me change my color to red just to indicate that this isn't really going to be ideal. What do we do with the data sources? Because these two features, both hero list and hero detail, they're essentially going to share a data source. They are going to, the hero list gets the data from the API and then it caches it and that's where the hero detail gets it from. So sharing it, like essentially there, what we'd have to do is we'd end up having to build two data sources which is not ideal we we they're going to have the same data source so why wouldn't they share them so dividing the hero list and hero detail into two separate modules in terms of their data sources is not ideal likewise what about their domain models so the hero model itself like you think of everything it takes to become a hero you know you have a picture you have a name an attribute melee or uh, ranged you have some stats Basically what it means to be a hero, the hero model is gonna be shared across the hero list and the hero detail. So how would that work? Again, you, this is not ideal because they're, they, you know, they, they're gonna be sharing that model. To have them in different modules is kind of silly. So I'm gonna do a little you know, double quotation mark over here because this is the same, this is the same, doesn't really work. And then for the last thing here, we're gonna talk about the use cases. This is the last uh, sort of layer in the business, um, or the last, component of the business layer. Uh, how does it fit the business logic? This is fine because you would have, you know, imagine a use case in the hero list screen to get it from the network, cache it and display it. That's fine. That can live totally isolated from the detail screen. Likewise, the detail screen would have a use case where it would get it from the cache and display it. So they can live totally separate. They don't have to share information. So that's totally fine. So I'll do a little green, uh, double quotation mark there to say that's the same. At the end of the day, this isn't bad, but it's, you know, it gets a lot of green check marks, but when it comes to sharing the data sources and the domain models, it doesn't really fit because they're they're going to be the same. So why would you uh, why would you create them? Like what module would you put them in? For example, would you put the hero model in the hero list module or would you put the hero model in the hero detail uh, module? You know, where would you put it? So the module structure there doesn't really make sense. All right, so now we're gonna talk about modularization by layer. So what does this look like? So if we modularize this thing by layer, we'd have you know domain, we'd have data source, interactors, and presentation. That would be our kind of four main layers. And we'd have to figure out how to break that up, how to break up um, you know, the list screen, the detail screen, the app, you know, all that stuff. So for the UI stuff, domain, you know, this doesn't, this is not applicable. There's no UI component in the domain layer. For data sources, again, none applicable. There's no uh, UI component for the data sources layer, uh, or for the data sources, yeah, layer, I guess you would say. And again, UI interactors, none applicable. So when we get down to presentation, however, uh, here's where we see that this, this is probably the worst option. I think modularizing by layer is the worst option because, well, you'll see, hold on, we'll, we'll finish this diagram and then I'll show you that why I think it's the worst and why it's barely even considered modularization in my opinion. I think if you had a small project, this is fine. Like a small project with two screens would be totally fine, but no project has two screens. So really this is never fine. But anyway, let's go back to the diagram. So when it comes to the, the presentation layer with the UI component, of course, this is gonna be huge. If you have a big app and you put every single UI thing in a single module, like if you have a, a, an app with 50 screens or something, which is probably not that uncommon, put 50 screens in one module, that's dumb. Like you might as well not be modularizing at all. It's just like, you might as well put it all in one module at that point. And then same with the business. So like then here, you this this would be huge, this would be huge, this would be huge. And then for the last one here, this would be, you know, none applicable. In my opinion, this is the worst by far because it's not even really modularizing. Essentially, all you've done is broken up, yeah, the different layers that you would have in your single module into four different, four different um, components. But it's like, it's pointless. If you have a big app, these modules are going to be massive anyway. Uh, you can't 
like if you go back to our diagram for our criteria, um, you know, it fails, obviously it's not, whoops, let me change this to a different color. You know, it's not gonna be small. It's not gonna be easy to delegate work because you can't just be like, okay, here, one team, you own the domain models. What, what good is that? If you just own the domain models, you can't like build out a feature, you can't do anything. So like it's pointless. Uh, reusability, reusability would be also, I mean, technically reusability is okay, but um, you'd have to import like the entire module. It's kind of just pointless. Like it's, it's pointless. The whole modularizing by, uh, modularizing by feature is not, or by layer is just pointless. That's how I would describe it. All right, so now we're gonna talk about how we're gonna modularize in this project. Um, we're gonna go to the diagram, even though it's not going to really fit the diagram structure that we've been looking at, but let's go there anyway. So the way that we're gonna break this up, I'm gonna call this the hybrid model. Um, and the number of modules we're gonna have is, uh, I think it's like seven or something. It's not gonna fit up in this space, in this diagram. So I'm gonna draw a fresh diagram because uh, it's just not gonna fit the diagram structure, like I said. So let's create a fresh diagram here. And I'm going to do two kind of main uh, set, or two kind of main separation vectors, I guess you would say. Uh, Android library, so it's a, a library that contains an Android SDK dependencies, uh, and then we're going to have Kotlin library, so Kotlin or Java library, and these are the two kind of main categories of of these this module structure. So the first module that we're going to have is going to be the app module. The second module that we're gonna have is the UI hero list module. So this will contain the all of the UI components for the hero list. So if we went to our app, it's gonna contain any composables that are in this screen, basically. Then we're gonna have a UI hero detail module, which you probably guessed that one. So that again is if you click on here, what are the UI components that are used here? What kind of composables are used in here? What kind of state management, view models, that kind of stuff. And then one last module in the Android library section, and this is gonna be called components. This is gonna be where any kind of reusable composables are going to live. So if we have a composable that's used both in the hero list UI screen, plus a composable that's used, they're both used in the same, in the, those two screens, it would go in this components sort of uh, module. So now what about the Kotlin kind of side of this? Well, we're gonna have a core module. The core module will contain all of our core data structures. Um, if you've watched any of my courses, which I'm sure most of you have, uh, data state, that would be one of those, uh, the progress bar state, uh, stuff like that, stuff that could be used in, that's going to be used in like every use case, every view model, every everywhere. Every module probably will take the core module, basically. Um, and then the, the point of that is to make it as small as possible, because you wanna, anytime you're bringing in a module into another module, you wanna make sure that thing is really small too. We wanna keep that build time down. Uh, next is kind of a, a mix of stuff that is, um, you know, used probably in some modules, not all modules. That's just going to be some constants, maybe some network constants, some caching constants, that kind of stuff. Now, the last ones here are going to be the other layers for the hero sort of feature, I guess you could say. So you'd have like hero data source or hero data sources. Whoops, this should be spelled that wrong. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, hero interactors, interactors, and then also hero dash domain uh, the reason i made this hero domain and i didn't like you know add these into the core module is because not if if this was a large application uh you know not every uh, piece of the app would need to know like what a hero is what what you know like the like a, a model for a hero because maybe you have another feature that's like players it displays like the best players and the players don't need to know about the heroes so why would you have that in there and then have the core module imported into everything you'd have this useless hero model that's only used in like one module so i think breaking it up this way is good to into like core core data uh, structures that are used everywhere which would be this and then every sort of quote unquote feature would have their own domain module where they have their sort of core data structures and we're gonna have one last module which is hero data source uh, test we're gonna talk more about that when it, when it comes to actually testing i don't want to talk too much about it now but uh, now let's let's go over this module structure and see if it checks all of our boxes for our criteria so if we look at this there's a whole bunch of modules let's go take a look at our criteria are they small i think they're as small as possible i think that would be as small as you would possibly want to make those modules essentially you're breaking it up by feature and then also by layer that's that's pretty much how you're modularizing you're doing both sort of 
uh, work delegation would be very easy. For example, you could say, hey, uh, team of people, you own all of the modules related to the hero feature. So that would mean you own all of these. You own the hero UI list, you own hero detail, you own you would be able to work on components, you would be able to work on core constants, you, you would own all of these. And then and then that would be it. That would be the set of modules that you're able to update or change. Um, and then that's everything you need to be able to change the that sort of quote unquote feature of the app. So I think that checks the box. Uh, reusability. So let's go over here. Yes, we are reusing as much as possible. We have our you know core module where we're reusing stuff. Our data source, everything is everything I think is the reusability here is great. So what about Kotlin multi-platform? I would think check again. We've very clearly broken up, you know, into an Android library versus a Kotlin library. So if we wanted to build a multi-platform project, um, that separation is there already. So we're ready to go for that. So yeah, basically, I think that if you're going to build an app that scales, this is, uh, you know, I'm not going to say it's the best way. This is just the way that I thought of. But I, I think this is a solid, a solid way to modularize your project. And we're going to go through this, everything it takes to build something like this in the in the course. Uh, also, if you go to the GitHub page for the course, down here, I've built like a little table just to kind of, this is basically what I just built in the, uh, when I draw, draw that on the screen there, you know, I have the module name, uh, the type, so Android application, Kotlin or Java library, uh, an Android library, and then just like a little description of like what, what is in that module. So this is essentially how we're going to be modularizing this project. If you were to look at it, you'd see that right here. You know, you have app, components, constants, core. If you open up this hero module, it's then divided up into hero data source, data source test, domain, interactors, hero detail, or hero list. This is how we will be modularizing the project. That's it for the video. Hopefully now you have a little taste of modularization and you know what it's all about, why you should be interested in it, especially if you're going to go work on a team somewhere or if you're already on a team and you guys are thinking about modularizing. I think this would be really helpful. If you want to know more about the course and kind of what's going on with it, go on over to codingwithmitch.com, go to courses. It's the course right here, Modularizing Android Apps. You can click on this. You can watch the course demo for free by clicking over here on the right. You can uh, take a look at this GIF that I made that kind of demos the application. You can check out the high level topics that we go over, you know, Kotlin, clean architecture, MVI, multi-module, obviously that's what the course is all about. Compose, KTOR, SQL Delight, Coil. There's also image caching with Coil. There's image or there's caching with SQL Delight. Uh, unit tests, UI tests for Compose, Hilt for dependency injection, testing with Hilt, and building an offline first application. All of that is covered in this course. And of course, the main topic is, you know, modularization. Also, if you want to check out the code, the code is always free. The videos are not. You can go to this repo. I'll put a link down below. You can check out the code. You can check out the GIFs, the README, this little table of my module design. Thanks for watching. And at the very least, do not forget your engagement. Go down there, type something random, say, Mitch, here's your engagement. Here's your random engagement. Here's what I had for breakfast. It doesn't matter. Type something, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one.